Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman. Uh, if you've made it this far, you've probably figured out that I'm not doing any videos in order. The order is what the order is. I'm going to answer questions as they come up, and maybe I'll reorder the videos some other day. One of the questions that comes up a lot, and I see questions like this on Stack Overflow, is how do I find the process that has a certain port open? And if so, how do I get rid of that process? How do I kill that process? A lot of times you'll find an answer on Stack Overflow and you'll find yourself pasting that directly into your code or into your command prompt, but you really don't understand why it works like that. Or maybe you went to University for Computer Science and you know all about that. So maybe this video isn't for you and that's okay. I hope you subscribe anyway. But I think it's useful to understand why these things work and the couple of different ways things can be done. So let's go with an assumption that we'll drop out to our command line here. I'm going to show both Windows and Linux. I happen to be using a Windows machine. I also happen to be using the Windows terminal. But just to give a little bit of context, you can go to your Windows start menu and you can type CMD and you can get the command prompt. Or if you go to the Windows store, you can get the Windows terminal that I'm using. Now remember, I did a whole video on how a terminal is not a shell. So when we come out here, we can see that there's PowerShell, there's the command prompt that you might have learned as DOS, or at least it's like DOS. Uh, there's another PowerShell called PowerShell Core. There's Bash, and some other shells as well. What we're going to focus on here is if I've got the command prompt on Windows or Linux, whether it be a Linux machine or even a Mac, and I want to find out what port is open, who has it open, and what I'm going to do about it. And the reason that this happens, I'll come out here at DOS, is uh, you may be doing something. Let's say that you're writing a, um, uh, a node application. So I'll come out here and I'll come to my node application and I'll say, look, here's a little app, right? Just a little app. And let's go and open that in Visual Studio Code to make sure that we know what it does. Not that fancy. It just opens up port 1337 and does some stuff and writes out hello world. Okay, little web server. I'm going to say node instead of code and then I'll run that. And then it says, huh, scary error. When you're early in career, scary errors happen a lot. When you're a little bit later in career, you tend to read the errors because truly those errors often tell you what's going on but then you still need that context. So here it's telling us exactly what's wrong. Address already in use, but it's not really clear. What address is it? Uh, what does that mean? Is, is that important? Is that a line number? So this is saying basically all of the local IP addresses. We're not going to worry about IP addresses and stuff like that yet. We're just going to think about this port. We see it says 1337 here. And then we also see that it says 1337 here. So all the network cards on my computer are currently listening on 1337. But I never ran that. See, if I try to run it again, it's saying it can't because it's already in use. Somebody, something, specifically a process, has gotten there first. Now if I open up browser and I go localhost 1337, I can see someone's listening on port 1337. I just want to know who they are, and I want to make them go away so I can get back to my work. Again, if you're later in career, you might say, oh, I left it open over here, and then you'll go and get rid of it. But let's explore our machines, and this is really important. Important, whether it's Windows, Mac, or Linux, that you remember that your computer is not a black box. There's nothing hidden from you. It's only how far down you want to go. The analogy that I often use is when I'm driving a car. I might have an Uber. I might drive a car with an automatic shift. I might drive a car with a stick shift. But whether the Uber breaks down or my stick shift car breaks down, if I need to change a tire, it's useful to sometimes know how to do that. That doesn't mean I won't sometimes call someone and ask their help and ask them to change the tire for me. But it's nice if I know how to do it as well. So let's find out what's going on underneath there. Now, on Windows, and this is in that DOS prompt or that CMD prompt. 
This is not PowerShell. You can type ver version to confirm where you are. You can type CMD to go into that, that prompt. I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen here. You can type a thing called netstat. And netstat is interesting because it will list out all of your local addresses and the port that it's listening on, and then foreign addresses, and it'll list them out for a while. Netstat has a bunch of options. Most command prompts have a bunch of options, and you can usually go dash dash help to get the help. Netstat or network status help displays information about our current network. So that's cool. All right. So I'm interested in a couple of things. I'm interested in the connections and I'm interested in the executables. So maybe I need these two things, A and B. Probably for all, and I don't know what the B stands for. Netstat dash B dash A. Now here it says this operation requires elevation. On Linux, that would mean that you write sudo super user do. And on Windows, that would mean that you would run something as administrator. So I'm going to go back to my start menu. And I'm going to type in terminal. I'm going to right click on it and say run as administrator. I'm going to get a prompt that pops up that you can't see that's going to say, are you sure you want to do such dangerous things? And I will go to my command prompt. And let's do that netstat dash b dash a. It was the dash b that we'll talk about in a second that required that elevation. I'll show you a way to do this in a second that doesn't require elevation. Okay, so what this is doing is it's spinning, 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 and listing out all the things that are happening on my machine. And you'll notice what it's doing is it's putting the name of the process above each one. So then I could theoretically scroll around in here and look for the thing that is causing me trouble. That's kind of tedious, but it's something that I could potentially do if I wanted to. It takes a little bit of time because it's actually going and looking each thing up and then going and looking up what the process is, and it's slow and kind of yucky. All right? If I wait long enough, I could do that. But remember that netstat have some options. So we'll run netstat dash help again. And this time, I'm going to do all the connections. And here I'm going to say, give me the process ID associated with that connection. And that's going to allow me to do this without elevation. Instead of running as administrator, which you want to try to avoid if you can. So we'll put that away and we'll say netstat. And then we can actually put all these together. Dash A, dash O, dash N, like this. Okay, that looked a little bit better. Spinning, spinning, spinning. Goes for a while. I can look through here. See if I see there's something. Okay, I see my 1337. And then there's a number associated with it. That's the number of the process. But that takes a while. That's no fun. So let's do this. Again, we're in DOS. We're in Windows Command Prompt. You could also use PowerShell or other things like that. I'm going to say, hey, pipe that through fine string. And I'm going to say, hey, fine string. I think the port I wanted to look for was 1337. So now all that information pops back. It's filtered by fine string, and only the places where 1337 are show up. So now it's process ID 35780. That's cool. Now, if I wanted to just make it go away, I could say task kill and we could make it go away. And we'll do that in a little bit. But I want to know what it is. There's a couple ways I can do that. First, I'll do this way. I'm going to right click anywhere down here in the taskbar on Windows, a task manager. I'll bring that task manager over here. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to hit PID. And I can sort by the PID, the process ID, and I can find 35780. There we go. 
and I can see that it's Node. So I left a node running somewhere. And I could then click on it. I could end that task. We'll do it from the command line instead. I could say task kill. I could say, hey, force the, the closing, the stopping of that PID. Shut it down like this. Okay. But let's go and see how we would ask without opening Task Manager. Well, there's a command called task list. Task list is kind of the command line version of Task Manager. So once again, I have a list to go through here, which is kind of interesting. And then with all things, I can say dash dash help, or sometimes it's slash question mark. And it allows me to do some interesting filtering. I can say filter, whatever, status, memory, title. I can ask all kinds of questions. Equals to, not equals to, greater than, less than, greater than or equals to, or less than or equals to. Now remember that we are looking, I'm going to scroll back up here. Actually, I don't need to. I will just do that. I'm looking for 35780. I'm going to say task list. Remember what we could do. Got our filters here. Okay, dash fi and then a filter. I think we'll use PID. I'm going to say task list, dash filter, say PID equals this. Oops, extra K. All right, look at that. Do those two commands next to each other. Start from scratch. So now I can say, hey, who's using that port? And then I can say, okay, well, who's on that PID? It's node. And then I can say, ask kill PID. And then we can either say node.exe, but we would kill them all, or we can kill just that one. Cool. Now I'm going to try something different here, because we just did that from the command line in Windows. I'm going to switch over to Linux. So this is Linux. I'm using WSL2. But it, for all intents, this is Linux. It is Linux. So I'll start it again. I'm running Node. And go and prove it. I'm bringing up our browser. Bring our local host 177 or 1377. Okay. Now I'm elsewhere in Linux. And I'm finding myself asking that same question. Do I have Netstat? I know how to use that in DOS. Like I do. But Netstat in Linux runs slightly differently than it does in DOS or in Windows. And again, it's not really DOS, I know that. But uh, it came from DOS, so the command probably kind of considered to be like DOS. Here, I see right off the bat that someone is sitting there on 1337. The layout's a little different. But I'm not getting the information that I want. I'm going to say on Linux, Netstat dash B dash A, if that works. It doesn't, because their voices are different. The name is the same, but Linux and Windows are different. So on Linux, we're going to say netstat. Actually, let's look at the choices. Dash dash help. I want to see, hey, who's listening? Okay, hey, who's listening? I want to see those numerics again. That's super important. Hey, maybe you can tell me the program name. That would be super helpful to know that information. And then maybe just the things that are on TCP IP or the things that are in a socket. So let's go netstat dash L T N P. Sometimes you memorize these things. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you write them down. But more importantly, when you Google for them and you find Stack Overflow, maybe because you watch this video, you'll know what it's doing. So here I said netstat and you'll notice I didn't run as sudo. I didn't super user this. And I can say, look, it's node. I could go back here and kill it. I could just hit control C or I could do a task kill, except on Linux, it's not called task kill. It's called kill. You may see, see things online that say kill dash nine. That's a very aggressive way of making a process go away. We'd rather give them a heads up, just a little bop on the head. But we say, hey, uh, kill uh, dash 15. 9 is mean, 15 is not so mean. I remember because 911 is a big deal. And then we'll say 35, 
8.0. Now we can run that again, and we can see that the process is gone. We run that again. We run this again. I could also, just like I piped through fine string on DOS, I could say grep, oops, grep1337, with little quotes there. Oops, I didn't do my quotes right. I just hit Control Z and I try again. There we go. So then that confirms the port that we're listening on. All right. And then my kill is going to be a different process name right now. And that goes away. That is doing it at the command line with just a little task manager in for fun. Back to Windows, there's some really great tools that are called Sys Internals. You go out there and you Google for Sys Internals, S Y S Internals. You will find some documentation up here. And there's some wonderful tools that have been around for a very long time by a very smart fellow. And you can get these utilities and download them. The one that you're going to want to get is called TCP View. When you run TCP View, it'll pop up and it'll look like this. So this looks a lot like the stuff that we saw before at the command line, except it's in a graphical place here. It means I can sort it. These ones that are currently red are going away and green ones are coming in. And then I can look at that. I can go right to it. That's nice. The TCP view showed me everything I needed to know. I did need to run it as an administrator. And I could go and end process right there if I wanted to. You can see that that's the name of my computer. That's the port that we're listening on we're using TCP. We see our PID there hidden behind the menu. And I could go and then terminate that. So that's pretty cool. If I want to, I could even go and say, look at the process and see exactly where that file is located and then kill it from here if I feel like it. So lots of different choices. The thing that's worth pointing out though, in everything that I did, Mac, Linux, PC, graphical, DOS, PowerShell, Bash, whatever. A port is a port. That's not a DOS thing or a Mac thing or a Linux thing. It's just a thing, a computer thing. And processes listen on ports and first come, first serve. So when someone shows up and they're on a port, nobody else gets to be on that port. In this case here, you might be developing some software. You might have your Node app or your .NET app start up on a port and be running off and doing something. But also if you have malware, or some evil application that might be listening in on a port, you have to be able to see those in TCP view. It's really hard for those programs to hide themselves if they are just processes that have started up. So if you're ever debugging a friend's computer or you're looking for a virus on your non-technical parent's machine, these kind of tools and the ability to do these things are super useful. We learned about Netstat, task kill, task list, all on DOS. Then we learned about Netstat, a little bit of grep, and then we did a kill, dash 15, the nicer kill, on Linux. And in all of this, we used WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, and we used the Windows Terminal. So, maybe they taught you this in school, maybe they didn't. If this was useful, please subscribe to my channel, uh, and that way I can buy tacos and do more videos for you. Thank you so much.